I can't die, can my half a saint is again? <sighs> my friends, it's that time again where we sit down and discuss the fashion trends of the season. In this video, we're going to get into the upcoming trends for fall winter 2024. Now, if you followed my channel for any length of time, you know how we feel about trends here. They are here to spark creativity, drum up discussion, help you to refresh, create an opportunity for you to invest in the things that you love. However, we do not believe in overindulging in trends. In the pursuit of personal style, trends can be a great, great help. However, they can also hinder our personal style. So we try to indulge in things that really excite us and make sense with what we already have. If that sounds good to you, we can go ahead and get right into this video. Now, there was an overabundance of trending articles and items. And if I went through every single one of them for men and women, we would be here for multiple hours. <laughs> you might be okay with hearing the sound of my voice for that long, but I certainly don't want to do that. So I've broken it down into seven trends that I feel like are very accessible and exciting, and we're going to go through those one by one. In no particular order, let's get started. Our first trend is the grandpa core trend. Now the internet is infamous for curating very specific aesthetics and dubbing them blank core. That's exactly what we're seeing happening here coming down the runway. We're seeing lots of looks that really fit within this grandpa core aesthetic. These looks are giving reference to what our grandfathers might have worn in their heyday, or maybe even what they're wearing today. Think cozy knits, argyle sweaters, sweater vests, high-waisted relaxed trousers, loafers, and other elements that feel slightly vintage. This aesthetic does lean into preppier motifs, however, the more relaxed and casual vibe definitely makes it more accessible for those who don't quite resonate with the preppy aesthetic. Even more beautiful is that you can see it in bold hues or in monochromatic neutrals. So there's a way to do this for your comfort level. Feel free to take notes from brands like J.W. Anderson, Noro Piana, Willy Chavaria, and Tommy Hilfiger. Next up on our list, we have tailoring, as is customary for fall winter shows. I love seeing the triumphant return, and we're seeing a not so subtle shift. While yes, the oversized and relaxed silhouettes that we've grown to love over the past several years are still here to stay, and still made their presence known, we're also seeing a not-so-subtle shift back to more streamlined and fitted silhouettes. As a person who does not personally benefit from a more unconstructed style of suit, this really speaks to me. What was particularly interesting was the current it brand, The Row, introduced very sleek silhouettes for their show, their women's wear show. And if you know The Row, they are the pinnacle of relaxed, oversized, and effortless. So to see a more fitted and streamlined silhouette was a pleasant surprise. Eddie Simon did what Eddie Simon does best for menswear and gave us ultra skinny and sharp suits for his menswear collection. Willy Tavaria, though, really caught my attention because he struck the perfect blend between sophistication, but avant-garde via Alessandro Michele with Gucci type of whimsy. Lots of great options. I am loving the shift back to a more tailored and streamlined look. Every season we talk about the hot color, this season, there are two hot colors, but we're going to focus on the one. And to my surprise, the one I chose to talk about is the color that I tend to wear the least, and that is red. As the seasons are changing, we're graduating away from the vibrant and poppy shades that we saw for spring and summer. Instead, we're moving into a more spicy, more moody tone. We're really seeing everything from cherry red to merlot. I'll be the first to admit that it's not always a color that I want to wear, but I'm liking what I'm seeing. For the more bold and daring individual, try a 
statement for a coat in cherry red, a la Prabhu Garang or Christian Siriana. However, if that's a little bit too much for you, how about this tinsel dress from La Point in a more muted shade? Still very eye-catching, but a little bit more wearable. I can tell you that if La Point does this in a top version, I will buy it. However, if that's still not quite your style, feel free to incorporate red into your knitwear, which is the most approachable and easiest point of entry for this trend. I already have a couple of pieces that I picked up last year that will really allow me to bring this trend to life. I've got a beautiful pair of Merlot trousers that I got from Zara, and I got a matching double layered sheer long sleeve that also has a Merlot underlayer, which is perfect. What do you think? Are you going to partake in the red trend? Or are you really thinking more about delving into green, which is the other hot color for the season? All right, moving right along, we have my personal favorite trend on the list, which is a statement coat. As a self-proclaimed outerwear enthusiast, this trend is made for me. And I was looking forward to seeing how they were going to up the ante this season. I was not disappointed. Statement really depends on who you're talking to. And for Fendi, they introduced gorgeous, sumptuous, buttery leather jackets in spicy autumnal colors. The drama is brought in through the richness and decadence of this leather, the length, and the color. The styling is a bit more minimalist, but a statement coat like this is something that will last you for a lifetime. However, if you want to punch up the drama a bit, you could offer for this funnel neck plaid maxi number in yellow from Chloe. It feels very punk and I love it. Plaid is a pattern that I typically stray away from. However, the punkish vibes are spectacular. Naturally, we are seeing a bevy of furs, both faux and real, in a rainbow of colors. Cropped, maxi, shag, you name it, you've got options. How do you think you're gonna introduce some statement outerwear into your wardrobe this season? All right, hmm. This is the one that really inspired me to make this video. Elements of Western have been trending in recent years, and as soon as we thought we were going to get away from it, we had some really significant cultural moments. I'm talking the release of the Cowboy Carter album, which created a mass of hype. But I'm also talking about the Louis Vuitton menswear show. Pharrell did his thing. So let's talk about it. Although Louis Vuitton, in my opinion, really, really nailed the assignment, we did see multiple designers incorporate these elements into their shows. For Celine, Eddie Simon really brought us a minimalist and chic interpretation of the Pioneer Man. We're seeing the black suits, however, they're being paired with pocketed shirts, wide-brimmed hats, silk bows, and horses. <laughs> For Willy Tavaria's show, he also did several wide-brimmed hats, but now we're seeing flannel and washed denim. He kept the colors fairly muted so that he would really be able to play with different accents and different proportions. I know I keep giving him his flowers, but I'm really loving how he's taking these things that we know so well and injecting a little bit of drama to them to make them feel fresh. Isabel Moran stayed very true to its roots. We saw fringe, sumptuous suede, and flat studs, which give a Western feel, but a little bit of a rocker chic vibe. Whereas Chloe incorporated elements that felt appropriate for the prairie. That maxi dress that was sheer and that mauve color with the ruffles, that was gorgeous to me. My jaw actually dropped when I saw it. But LV, LV to me did it best. I also loved the representation and collaboration with indigenous peoples, which really brought so many authentic elements to the show. Turquoise jewelry, floral embroidery, denim, silk bows, 
everything we want for a Western collection was present and accounted for. This is a trend we see for every season, and I'm talking about a little sparkle, a little shine, something for the magpie in you and I. However, we're definitely seeing a difference in how this is being presented from spring and summer. While we see glitzy elements often, spring and summer really brought bold metallics, an almost futuristic vibe, coated denim, bold silver, bold gold. Instead, we're seeing tinsel and iridescence. Since fall and winter is the season dedicated to the holiday party, we're seeing looks that feel very appropriate for that type of occasion. I'm talking sequin jackets and pants, all the way up to eye-catching and luminescent textures, festive tinsel sweaters, and incorporating lorex into dresses and knitwear to give a little sparkle and a little bit of whimsy. I really got a kick out of the giant tinsel accents from brands like Zomer and Nicholas Skovsgaard. They were very fun, and I loved just the fun of fashion. You are sure to dazzle most anyone in one of these looks. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the rise in necklines. We're not just talking about your typical, you know, turtleneck sweater or a jacket with a slightly, you know, higher neckline. We're talking sitting right under the chin, which, as a person with a moderately long neck, is something that I really appreciate. I enjoy bringing attention to that area and really showing it off, and I am able to do so with this trend. We're looking at really cool outerwear from brands like Perenza Schuler and Burberry. However, you could also incorporate it into your knitwear. At House Lada, Max Mara, you take your pick. But we're not just seeing the funnel collar, we're also seeing just some interesting neckwear come in as well. Backward shirt collars and even the return of the ruff are definitely bringing a little bit something interesting and something slightly new. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Which of these trends was your favorite? Was there any particular trend that I didn't mention that you're excited about? As per usual for a video like this, I have left links down below to different articles that you can read so that you can see if there are any other fashion trends that you're keen on that I didn't talk about today. As always guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!